The thoroughbred exists because its selection has depended not on experts, technicians, or zoologists, but on a piece of wood, the winning post of the Epsom Derby. So said the great Italian owner, trainer, and breeder, Signor Federico Tesio. For more than 200 years, it has remained the greatest prize and the greatest test of the racehorse. It was with luck, and not design, that the derby came to be run on Epsom Downs. Luck could have chosen no better place. From the start, the course runs uphill and right-handed. It reaches the top of the hill at the halfway point, and then descends left-handed down Tattenham Hill to Tattenham Corner. The course continues downhill from the beginning of the four furlong straight, leaning away from the stands. But just half a furlong from the finish, the ground rises again. On this course, a horse requires speed, stamina, balance, and a little bit of luck. Diomed won the first derby on the 4th of May, 1780, and owner Sir Charles Bunbury a first prize of 1,125 guineas. His friend, the 12th Earl of Derby, had held a party the year before, during which a new race was created and named by his grateful guests. Their host was assured his place in history. His success in the race was less assured. The colt, Sir Peter Teasel, provided the Earl with his only win in 1787. For 50 years, the Derby remained a local affair contested by a small group of stables. The jockey Frank Buckle won five, the last of these on Emilius in 1823. It was the last of seven for the colt's trainer, Robert Robson. The unpredictable Mameluke provided the jockey Jem Robinson with his fourth of six wins. In 1839, Bloomsbury won in a snowstorm at odds of 25 to 1. Villainy, not for the first time, was suspected but never proved. In 1844, the high moral tide of Victorian England began to turn. The winner, Running Rain, was found to be a four-year-old called Maccabeus and disqualified. An exceptional era of derby winners followed. The Flying Dutchman in 1849. West Australian, the first holder of the Triple Crown, the 2,000 guineas derby on the St. Ledger. The French bred and owned Gladiateur, the Avenger of Waterloo and second winner of the Triple Crown and Lord Lyon, the third holder of the crown in just 13 years. The last two decades of the 19th century were remarkable. No less than five horses won the Triple Crown. The first of these was Ormond in 1886, trained by John Porter. He was ridden by Fred Archer. It was his fifth and last derby. On the 8th of November that year, he committed suicide. He was only 29. In 1893, Isinglass, a lazy horse, won comfortably. 
he set a record for prize money that stood until 1952. Persimmon gave the Prince of Wales, later Edward VII, his first of three wins in 1896. Three years later, Flying Fox brought his trainer, John Porter, his seventh Derby winner. Three of these had also taken the Triple Crown. And in 1900, the year that a gate start was first used, Diamond and Jubilee gave the Prince of Wales his second success. Scepter's record of four classic victories in 1902 has never been equaled. The Phillies' only defeat came in the Derby. Danny Marr won on Rock Sand in 1903, the third successive win for American jockeys. Rock Sand went on to become the tenth winner of the Triple Crown. The third and last Derby winner to carry the colours of Edward VII was Minaru in 1909. War was declared in 1914 and racing at Epsom suspended. The champion jockey, Steve Donahue, won two of his six derbies at Newmarket, his first in 1915. In 1916, Fifinella had won the substitute derby in a canter, the last of six fillies to win the classic. Perhaps the bravest derby winner was humorist in 1921. Within a fortnight, he was dead from tubercular lung. In 1922, Captain Cuttle, written by Steve Donahue, passed the line in front of a field of 29 in a new record time for the race. It was the first of seven derbies for Beckhampton trainer Fred Darling. In 1933, the little chestnut Hyperion made light of his size and won as he pleased, several lengths ahead of King Salmon. He proved a derby winner of immense popularity and a sire of rare influence. Barham's lazy nature never allowed him to win by more than was necessary. But in 1935, he won the Triple Crown for the Aga Khan and became the fourth son of Blandford to win the Derby in seven years. The following year, the Aga Khan won again, this time with the Grey Mahmoud who set a hand-time record on the firm ground of 2 minutes, 33.8 seconds. Blue Peter's victory in the 1939 derby was imperious, but for the outbreak of war, he would almost certainly have become the 12th Triple Crown winner. Of those who saw this race, how many returned to Epsom Downs? The first post-war derby fell to the 50 to 1 outsider Airborne the fourth and last grey to claim the blue ribbon. 1949 was the first year the photo finish was in use. Nimbus in the centre, held on by a head from Amor Drake and a further head to Swallowtail. In 1952, Tullia, ridden by Charlie Smirk, became the last of five derby winners for the third Aga Khan. Tullia takes the lead, but Lester Pickett's challenging with... A considerable gamble by Ali Khan, which had reduced Talia's odds from 108 to 11 to 2 favoritism, had paid off. At his 28th attempt and in his 49th year, Sir Gordon Richards won his only derby aboard Pinza by four lengths. The Queen, crowned only four days before, had finished second with Oriel. In 1954, old and young combined. Trainer Joe Lawson, age 73, and Lester Piggott, only 18, were both winning their first derby. Piggott's second derby came three years later aboard the Noel Merlis train Crepello. In August, Crepello broke down and was retired without running again. Piggott's third derby in just seven years came in 1960 on St. Paddy. It was Sir Victor Sassoon's fourth win in eight years. The Australian jockey Scobie Breezley won his first derby, aged 50, in 1964, riding Santa Claus.
It was only the second Irish success in the race after Larkspur two years before. 1965 was Seabird's year. Towards the stand side, coming up to the furlong marker, and I say the leader from Seabird on the stand side. Seabird going away, and it looks as though barring accidents, he's going to win the derby easily. Seabird going away from Meadow Court in second place, and I say third at the line. Seabird, Seabird had beaten his 21 opponents without coming off the bit. It had been one of the easiest derby wins on record. In the autumn of 1952, Noel Merlis left Beckhampton for Newmarket. From his new stables at Warren Place, he trained 17 classic winners. One of the best of these was Royal Palace. A chill contracted before the St. Ledger ended his attempt at the Triple Crown. A year later, the same combination of Noel Merlis and owner Jim Joel came close to repeating their 1967 victory. Coming towards the stand side, Lester Bigger coming with a great challenge towards the outside, but it's Connaught the leader. Connaught as they race up towards the line from Survivor in second. Survivor gaining up Connaught as they race towards the line. Survivor's going to take it up and at the line. Survivor. The partnership of Vincent O'Brien and Lester Piggott was too strong. In 1969, it was Blakeney. But as they race up towards the line, it's great news going on from Shoemaker. Fritz Regent still coming there fast and coming up towards the line. It's Blakeney from Shoemaker and Fritz Regent. The first of two successes for his owner, trainer and breeder, Arthur Budget. As Seabird had done five years before, Nijinsky dominated 1970. On the advice of Vincent O'Brien, the American industrialist Charles Engelhard bought Nijinsky for $84,000 at the Woodbine Yearling Sales in Toronto. It was not long before O'Brien proved just how good a horse he had chosen. And they're away. And here is one of the first to show on the far side with Long Till now. And it's Long Till going on from Cry Baby. Long Till the leader from Cry Baby. Then comes Mont Plaisir on the far side. Then Approval and Meadowville. And then Gia. Behind Gia is the Swell. Then comes Stintino. Then behind them come Tambourine Man and Great Wall. And Najinsky just about in the center of the field now with Cry Baby has gone up on the inside of Long Till. And it's Crybaby and Long Till disputing it ahead of approval. Then comes Mont Plaisir and Meadowville. Then Najinsky, then the Swell. Then comes Gier on the outside and then Stintino. Behind Stintino is Great Wall and Tambourine Man is the back marker and it's Long Till. And Crybaby disputing it as they run up towards the mile post now. Long Till and Crybaby from Meadowville in third place. Then in fourth is approval on the inside of Mont Plaisir. Five on the outside. Six is Gier and seven, six is Najinsky rather. Seven is the Swell and eight Gier. Then comes Stintino 9, 10 is Great Wall, and 11 is Tambra Mean Man. And they're running to the top of the hill now with Sandy Barkley on Cry Baby, the leader from Long Till. Then comes Blasio, then Meadowville. Gears towards the outside, Najinsky towards the inner as they race round to the home turn now. And it's Long Till, Meadowville. Then comes Mont Plaisir, Gier with his white face showing towards the outside as they come to the three furlough marker. It's Meadowville in the center with Long Till on the far side, and Gier coming there very strongly. Great Wall has burst through over on the far side. Stintino's making a run towards the near side, and it's Great Wall under pressure from Gia. Gia now has taken it up at the two furlong pole. It's Gia under pressure in the lead, being pressed by Great Wall. Then comes Najinsky and then Stintino. They're racing up towards the furlong marker, and here comes Lester Pickett on Najinsky. It's Gia on the far side. Lester Pickett on the near side on Najinsky. Najinsky coming to take it up from Gia and racing up towards the line. It's a fist for Lester Pickett. Najinsky's gone clear. Najinsky's the winner. Gia is second. Stintino's third. Fourth is Great Wall and five Meadowville. Six is the Swell and seven approval and eight long till nine. Najinsky retired at the end of the season, the 12th and last holder of the Triple Crown to date.
and one of the finest winners of the Epsom Derby. Mill Reef's name will be recalled as long as people talk of racing. By the time of the Derby, he had caught the public's imagination as only a dozen have done this century. But before the race, doubts were expressed over his ability to stay the one and a half miles of Epsom. His young trainer, Ian Balding, had no doubts. And they're away. And Athens Wood and Lombardo, two of the first to show, with right up with them Credit Man, and his Credit Man going up to join Athens Wood and Lombardo. Then comes Lyndon Tree, then Beaming Lee, then on the near side is Irish Bull, then comes Bourbon and Lapache. Behind Lapache is the Parson, then comes Mill Reef, and then Homeric. And the back marker at the moment is Zug, with Dapper Dan also one of those in rear. And Credit Man, as they race up the hill, with Lyndon Tree right upside him, and Beaming Lee also. Then towards the outside is Lombardo. Meadens made good progress with. Frascati and Lapache, and just in behind them come Bourbon. Just in behind Bourbon is Irish Ball, and then comes uh, the Parson, and it's Linden Tree who's gone to the ball. And the back marker now is Toucan, and they're racing to the top of the hill now. And as they do so, it's Linden Tree in blinkers from Beaming Lee in second place. Frascati has gone third, then comes on the inside Meaden. On Meaden's outside is Credit Man, then comes Lombardo, Lapache, and Sea Epic, and then Mill Reef. Behind Mill Reef is Bourbon, and then comes Zogu, who's making very good progress. And Joe's Dream is the last at the moment as they race down towards Tattenham Corner. And it's Linden Tree in the lead, being pressed by Lombardo. And Homeric, who's made very good progress towards the outside. Then comes Mill Reef. Just in behind Mill Reef is Beaming Lee with Frascati. And they're round the home turn now. And as they round it, it's Linden Tree in the lead, being pressed by Lombardo. Then comes Homeric, then Frascati, and then Mill Reef just in behind the leaders. And Jeff Lewis looking to be going very e cosily at the moment. But it's Linden tree in the lead from Lombardo second Mill Reef has moved into third then comes Homeric then Athens Wood they're past the two furlong marker and it's Linden Tree from Lombardo then comes Mill Reef in third place then comes Homeric and then Irish Ball on the outside it's Linden Tree Lombardo and Mill Reef and Mill Reef striking the front now in the derby and Mill Reef going on now from Linden Tree on his inside it's Mill Reef and Linden Tree into the final furlong Mill Reef the leader Linden Tree second Irish Ball finishing first coming to the line and Mill Reef the winner this was the beginning of a unique sequence of victories in Europe's championship races. The Eclipse, King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Stakes, and Puy de l'Arc de Triomphe fell to him during the succeeding four months. Despite opposition from Brigadier Gerard, he was voted 1971 Horse of the Year. His American owner, Paul Mellon, had realized an ambition first dreamt of while an undergraduate at Cambridge in the 1920s. Mill Reef was later to sar two derby winners. On the instructions of owner John Galbraith, Lester Piggott was given the ride on Roberto, the three-to-one favorite, replacing the Australian jockey Bill Williamson, who had hurt his shoulder 10 days before. Despite Williamson being past fit, Galbraith remained adamant Piggott would ride. Coming up to the two and a half furlong point now, and it's Pentland first clear in the derby from Meadow Mint, then Ormindo, then making very good progress is Roberto with Ryan Gold at the two furlong marker, and it's Pentland first being challenged by Lester Piggott on Roberto, then comes Ryan Gold, then Meadow Mint behind them, Ormindo coming up towards the furlong marker now, and it's Ryan Gold who's hit the front from Roberto, it's Ryan Gold from Roberto, and Pentland first, Ryan Gold on the near side, Roberto on the far side, it's a great race home between these two, Ryan Gold and Roberto, Roberto inching his way back as they come to the line. It's a photo finish, Roberto and Ryan Gold with Pentland first in third place and then came Gombos and behind them our Mirage and behind our Mirage was Scottish Rifle and then Meadow Mint. Lester Piggott just get that extra inch out of Roberto. It looks as though he does as they come to the line. Roberto's nose on the far side and Ryan Gold's nose on the near side but Ryan Gold fights back at the line. It's desperately close. It's a desperately close finish this derby. It really will need a fully blown up print to determine who's won it if you hear due to the controversy over Piggott, Roberto had entered the winner's enclosure to muted applause. For Roberto, one of the race's bravest winners, 
this was undeserved. In 1973, Arthur Budget repeated his 1969 win with a half-brother to Blakeney named Morstan, who had run for the first time only three weeks before. The trainer, Peter Nelson, on the recommendation of his wife, bought a yearling by Far Streak for 5,200 guineas. Two years later, he won the derby at 50 to 1, and the following year became champion grass horse in North America. Holding Imperial Prince as they come up towards the line. It's Brian Taylor on Snow Knight in the lead from Imperial Prince. Bustino Colante, fourth place behind. Brian Taylor had written his only English classic victory before his fatal fall in Hong Kong in December 1984. The 1975 derby appeared to be between just two runners, Alec Head's French 2000 guineas and Prix Lupin winner Green Dancer, who was made the short price favourite, and from Peter Walwyn's stable, the Irish 2000 guineas winner Grundy. Or could the Morris Zilber train fill in a billiary, upset the pair? And so just over a mile still to run, and a little two to come now into Tatnam Corner, and it's Tony Murray on Anne's Rotanda still in the lead from Nuthatch on the outside. Then comes Red Region on the inside, no billiary just in behind them, but they have two and a half furlongs still to go, and it's Anne's Rotanda in the lead. Here comes Grundy going up into second place and working very hard on the outside is Green Dancer, but they have two furlongs still to go. And it's Hans Rotender in the lead from Grundy. And then comes No Billary, Whippet Crick, Green Dancer, and Royal Manacle. And so that's a leading half a dozen, but it's Grundy who's now first fourth into the lead. And they pass the furlong from home marker. And it's Grundy for England in the lead. No Billary for France in second, and Rotender in third. As they come up towards the line, Grundy, the hope of England, coming over the line. It's the winner of the derby from No Billary, running on to third place. Hunter Dancer in front of Whippet Crick, and Rotender. Then comes Green Dancer, Green Dancer for in by Royal Manacle, Dominion, Fidian, then comes Nuthatch, Romper, Red Regent. The winning distance of three lengths was the longest for 12 years and the time the third fastest since the war, after Nijinsky and Snow Knight. Grundy went on to win the Irish Derby, the Diamond Stakes at Ascot and the Horse of the Year title. In 1976, Lester Piggott set a new record in the derby by riding his seventh winner. And then comes Ombre and Surplage, Oates is fourth, then comes Hawkesbury and Waller making a tremendous hard work of it, but he's not going to get to them because they've now come towards the final furlong. And it's Lester Piggott on Ombre now takes up from Relkino. Then comes Oveson on the far side of the team. They've got about 150 yards to go. And it's Lester Piggott, he's done it again on Ombre. They come up towards the line. Ombre wins the derby from Relkino, Oates, Hawkesbury, Waller in fifth, then comes Boy. Petit. So what an upturn for Wallow. After finishing second the year before with nobiliary, Nelson Bunker Hunt had been recompensed. The victory of the Colt Boone's Cabin at the Curra in June 1974 heralded the beginning of an unlikely racing partnership which came to fruition three years later in the Derby. The partnership was between Robert Sangster and Vincent O'Brien. Between them, they evolved a deceptively simple business of buying the most expensive yearlings in the world with the intention of producing stallions for syndication. Sangster, son of football pool's promoter Vernon, having favoured investment of an eight million pound inheritance in bloodstock rather than the family business. The training of this newly acquired bloodstock lay with O'Brien, the Irish genius who had already plundered 12 English classics with nine horses. The best of these had been the 1970 Triple Crown winner Nijinsky, a son of Northern Dancer. It was to Northern Dancer that the partnership looked. At the 1975 Keeneland July sales in America, they purchased a small chestnut coat with four white socks for $200,000. He was named the Minstrel. Two years later, he came to Epsom.
Dollar Man and Nebbiolo, and it's Million Dollar Man on the far side of Baudelaire as Lucky Sovereign goes up to join them. Just in behind them come Nebbiolo, then Caparello, and then Be My Guest. Looking to the back markers, it's Sultan's Ruby and Lordy Door. Royal Plume coming there strongly on the inside as they race up the hill with Gerlock, and it's Baudelaire. Royal Plume, Valinsky, Million Dollar Man. Just in behind them, Caparello. Just in behind them, blushing groom towards the outside with Noble Venture just in front of him. The Minstrel's one of the back markers, and Night Before has been pulled up. Pat Edery has pulled up Night Before, and it's Baudelaire now as they race to the top of the hill. The back marker is Mr. Music Man with Royal Plume also losing ground, and still Million Dollar Man in the lead from Caparello, Baudelaire. Then, closely grouped in behind them, Nebbiolo, Noble Venture, Hot Groves making good progress on the outside as they run down into Chatham Corner. It's Million Dollar Man from Hot Grove now in second. Third is Caparello for Baudelaire. The Minstrel coming there strongly in fifth and being chased by Nebbiolo. Rushing Groom is in eighth place. In, still going well as they run down into the turn now with just over three furlongs to run in the derby and it's Million Dollar Man being pressed by Hot Grove. The Minstrel coming there in third place. Then comes Be My Guest making progress. Behind them, Blushing Groom on the outside, unleashing a run. Behind him is Monseigneur. They're coming to the two furlong marker. It's Hot Grove from the Minstrel, then Blushing Groom. And Monseigneur still making rapid progress towards the stand side. But it's Hot Grove from the Minstrel and Blushing Groom. Then Monseigneur moving into fourth. They're racing into the closing stages now. And it's Hot Grove from the Minstrel, Blushing Groom and Monseigneur. 100 yards to run in the dark. Be the Minstrel coming to challenge Hot Grove, and it's Lester Pickett and William Carlton. The Minstrel on the near side, Hot Grove on the north side, and the Minstrel wins it from Hot Grove. Blushing from his third, Lordy Door, Nebbiolo behind Nebbiolo. Ten million dollar man behind him was Papa Paul and then Bolivar. Two and a half months later, a half share in the Minstrel was sold back to his breeder, E.P. Taylor, for four million one hundred thousand dollars, setting his total value at nine million dollars. Seven years after Mill Reef's Derby triumph, his son, Shirley Heights, repeated the feat. ...towards the three panel from home marker, and it's a wine town still the leader, from Julio Marin, and now Mate Tran goes second. Paul Moore just in behind him, remained a man, and Tony Ive right there with the chance, but have a quarter mile to to go. And it's Willie Shoemaker on Hawaiian Town in the lead from remained a man. Picking out ground on the outside is Pajama Hunt. Then comes Shirley Height and Julia Marion, I don't think gonna find any more. They're coming now towards the final furlong. It's Hawaiian Town still the and remained a man. And Shirley Heights going with a tremendous run on the far side. They got about 100 yards to go. It's Hawaiian Town on the near side. Shirley Heights on the near side. And it's Shirley Heights who gets up in the last try to win it from Hawaiian Town, remained a man. His owner, Lord Halifax, trainer John Dunlop, and jockey Greville Starkey had all won their first derby. At the close of the season, Shirley Heights was syndicated for £1,600,000. Priority was given to English breeders, and the Royal Studs became a prominent shareholder, standing him at the Sandringham Stud. In 1985, the tradition continued. His son, Slip Anchor, also won the derby. Despite snowstorms, scandals, intractable leases at Epsom and two world wars, the derby has been run every year since 1780. Neither royal disapproval in 1840, nor a move on several occasions from its traditional Wednesday fixture, have diminished the stature of the derby. It has endured as no other sporting event in the world. It celebrated its 200th running in bright sun on the 6th of June, 1979. Just about it. They're all installed for the 200th derby. <coughs> Down to orders and they're away. And a very quick break by Accomplice in the centre. And Accomplice is one of the first to show. On the near side, uh, Leafard's Wish, and it's Leafard's Wish going up to join Accomplice. Northern Baby on the outside. Two of Diamonds and Crack of Al are both right up with them, and then comes Hard Green. And it's Leafard's Wish in the lead now from Accomplice on the far side, then Crack of Al and Hard Green, and then comes...